Hello everyone. I know I did not do the live I mean live stream for a long time. Uh, I had you know reasons which I'm not gonna explain. But anyway, I um, decided to do again the test run today and I had to reset up everything and I did not even schedule. But anyway, hello everyone. I hope you're doing wonderful. Uh, and today I, I would like to answer one of the questions uh, uh, from people from my school. Uh, let me see if you connect it. Looks like you are. And let me know if uh, everything is good. If the sound is good, picture is good, quality is good. And if there is a problem, let me know also. But anyway, uh, the question today I would like to answer about uh, common problem in woodworking. And if you're doing a woodworking, uh, you know everybody's have a challenge with that. And I'm talking about the movement of the wood. The problem is uh, like that, okay? When you just buy a, a wood from lumber yard, uh, obviously nowadays you can't buy air dry wood. Uh, most likely it's going to be kiln dry. And uh, the problem with that, uh, it's a really quick process. It is dry, but uh, it's pretty fresh yet. And the wood itself, lumber itself, uh, has a tendency to. Uh, adapt to environment. Let's say you bring a piece of wood from a lumber yard to your shop. Uh, if you have a moisture in your shop, the wood gonna absorb that moisture and it's gonna swell. And uh, if you bring uh, that piece of lumber, piece of wood inside of the house, and uh, let's say you have dehumidifier inside and the uh, humidity uh, in your shop is uh, much you know less than outside let's say in my shop i'm keeping my humidity really low i do have a dehumidifier and i keep that approximately 35 percent even if i live in florida still 35 percent that's uh, common humidity for my environment well i'm not talking about uh, uh, the full shop because uh, <laughs> this is just my studio where I uh, just do all of my carving and uh, that is not really a shop. I do have another place for the uh, machines and so on but uh, right now it's, it's my shop okay. So here I do have approximately I would say about 35 percent of humidity uh, and uh, I do wood carving every day and I have to deal with that problem also. One of the questions um, uh, from a student of my school, uh, he wrote me email, uh, and uh, it's a common question. I actually have to answer that question multiple times uh, when I'm doing a in-person classes. And the question is: When you buy a piece of wood, okay? Everybody knows. I mean, it's uh, if you woodworker, you know it's gonna move. It's going to move, it's going to shrink, it's going to swallow, it's going to cup, it's going to warp, it's going to, you know, all kind of crazy uh, movements. Okay, how you uh, attack that piece of wood when you just doing a wood carving? Let's say, uh, like in this case, uh, we're talking about, uh, I don't know, maybe about three inches thick, you know, overall. So it's about three inches thick from uh, the upper point to the bottom. And uh, obviously, I did not glue pieces together, so it is uh, uh, that at least this part, the upper part, is you know solid wood. And we did, by the way, uh, that project in Mark Adams uh, school class. Uh, I was teaching this year, and one of the classes, uh, I believe, it was uh, fundamentals. Well, it's not really. Uh, I I shouldn't say it's a fundamentals but yes I mean some people never carved in that class and we worked on that uh, type of project which is uh, oak with a couple you know acorns uh, it's somewhat complicated project but it's nice okay so let's say when you just get a piece of wood 
And logically, logically, let me just draw to you. Okay, what happens? Uh, what happens with that? Let me double check if I'm connected there. Yes, I am. Uh, what happens with that? Okay, so let's say you've got a board. Okay, that is your board. And as you know, uh, when you're buying a piece of wood, and I'm, I'm looking at that board just, uh, you know, from the side. Uh, I'm not going to explain to you different uh, types of cuts, like quarter sewn, rift cut, or just plain sewn. Let's say you just get the plain sewn, the normal board, whatever they sell. And when you look at it, those rings, well, that is the board actually, you know, for you, it just wouldn't be confused. And when you're looking at that board, it's going to have some rings. Okay. And closer to the edge you get, those rings going to be something like that. Okay. Uh, please understand. What is piece of wood? Uh, I like to uh, say that it's like a bunch of uh, drinking straws compacted together. And that is exactly what it is. And uh, those straws placed right there inside of those, you know, movements. And they're not really consistent. Okay. So you have to understand those straws, that's where the juice going. All right. Closer to the edge you get, you've got absolutely different movement of those strokes. Okay, please, uh, again, try to understand. Uh, let's say if you bring that piece inside of the shop and the air is uh, dry, you don't have a moisture, what happens? Uh, those uh, strokes, they are compacting. They getting really close to the center. Uh, in this case, and this case, it's going to closer to that center. So they they kind of uh, shrink together, and it's not only uh, affects how the board going to move, if it's going to go you know wider or narrow. Uh, it's also going to cup and warp and twist and do all kind of crazy movements. Because uh, even if you look at the, at the grain of the wood. Uh, let's say, uh, you know, you've got the straw, but that straw does not go all the way straight. It has all kinds of movement right on the surface also. And those are, you know, the grain you can see and which is what we like actually, you know, the movements of the grain. And just because uh, there's not enough air, let's say, not enough water in the air. So it's actually starts shrinking and it's causing you know, that movement. And uh, obviously, if uh, you live in a really uh, moist environment, if there's a lot of humidity in the air, so it's gonna, you know, puff, it's gonna swallow, and it's still gonna move, okay? And uh, that is the problem. And the question is, uh, what side, when you look at uh, uh, a piece of wood, uh, if you look at that piece of wood, is that better to just to place your uh, carving on the top and leave the bottom as a background or you should just flip it upside down like that and then it's going to be uh, your surface you're going to work on. Okay, so that is the big question. Okay, and it makes sense, you know, to ask that type of question. But the answer would be really simple. Okay, the answer would be really simple. If you are planning uh, to do a low relief carving, which you're just taking slightly, like for example, this, you know, that panel, we're working for um, <laughs> quite a long time because I was uh, too busy, but uh, that panel is a really low relief carving. It's actually only about a 16th of an inch deep. Uh, some parts maybe like maybe three millimeters, millimeter and a half, you know, to three millimeters. Some parts maybe, maybe 
uh, would be about uh, five millimeters deep. Obviously, that's gonna move, okay? It's gonna move. But if you're working on a really, really, you know, uh, carving like that, like uh, a lot of airborne stuff, what happens when you excavate, when you excavate uh, those openings, and when you just undercut, and that's a paper thin, you can see it's just wiggling, it's a paper thin, <laughs> you actually uh, moving out those fibers, okay, you don't have continuous pipe going through, there's no more straws, okay, yeah, uh, a short parts of those straws still there, but you really just because you're carving out, you're relieving that stress. Uh, the answer is, if you're working on a really, you know, high relief, especially if a lot of stuff is going to be like airborne, like a piece like right there, you know, there's a lot of excavation going on. I don't have any cracks. I don't have any, uh, you know, expansions and uh, and I don't have pretty much uh, any movement. Maybe there is a micro movement, but it's not gonna move like one eighth of an inch, three millimeters, like on a solid board, because those fibers they work together on a solid board. But if you but if you have a lot of uh, movement and you already cut away uh, a lot of material, there's uh, no tension left. Okay. So the movement going to be minimum. So you have, I mean, you don't really have to worry. To answer you what side you have to carve, I mean, in my opinion, I, I, I could be wrong. In my opinion, it doesn't really matter because there's not going to be much movement. Okay, so there's not much tension left. So it's uh, only my opinion. And I think uh, I know what I'm talking about because I've done carving for a long time and that piece is a proof uh, it's about 10 years old. It's still, uh, you know, right there. I have zero, zero cracks uh, on that piece. Not only that, I mean, that piece the same way. I mean, absolutely zero. And that one is actually one uh, older piece. And I have some pieces like 20 years old, 25 years old, and they still don't have any movement. I hope it uh, uh, answers your question. So, thank you very much, wonderful people. That's enough for today. I hope to connect a little more often right now because I shipped my, uh, you know, project and I'm taking a little break uh, from the live projects and I'm concentrating right now on school. But anyway, let me show that one more time. That is what we worked um, at the class in person. I was teaching uh, this summer. Well, actually, that was uh, springtime, I believe. Uh, at Mark Adams School, and that's what we worked on. Okay, now uh, we did another class in um, Maine, state of Maine, in uh, Williams Brown School. So it's not done yet. I still gonna do a little more work, uh, but that was a Glen Gibbons style carving. And another one that's already gone. Uh, we ha I had another class. Uh, Green Gibbons style in Mark Adams school and somebody wanted to buy it and uh, they bought that piece from me okay uh, ask me questions comment don't forget to hit that like button that's uh, it is important that means you know if I have some likes that means I can just do more videos all right have a wonderful and uh, blessed rest of your day Thank you.